blackness is not a social construct that was created by white people. We love to say that, but it's just historically not true. The concept of blackness, meaning people who identified themselves as being black, as opposed to someone from the outside referring to them as black, goes back thousands of years in antiquity. The people of Kemet, K-E-M-T, that we know today as Egypt, referred to themselves as being black. They called their country the land of the blacks. So no, blackness predates European colonization and European slavery. So then what did white people create? They created whiteness. Now let me explain that, because that's, that's, that might seem odd to you for me to say that white people created whiteness. And that's the thing that has been harmful to black people and to people of color and around the globe for hundreds of years, the formation, the creation, and the notion of whiteness, not blackness. Let me explain. Well, if we look beginning in 1576, there is this uh, French theorist named Jean Bodin. And he wrote six books and he classified uh, the different human beings as being uh, some are higher of a higher order than others. Then we have Jean Frederick Blumenbach who wrote his famous treatise on the nature and the variety of mankind in 1775. And in that treatise, Jean, Johann, rather, Frederick Blumenbach put human beings into three categories, Caucasoid, Negroid, and Mongoloid. Now we understand what Caucasoid, that's white. Negroid, Negro, black. Mongoloid, which is a very offensive term today, uh, means Asian. Johann Blumenbach was not the first European theorist to put human beings into categories and classifications and some type of hierarchical structure. The first would have been a gentleman by the name of Carl Linnaeus. Carl Linnaeus' uh, work that started this conversation it was called Systema Naturae, which means the systems of nature. Blumenbach theorized that there were four different kinds of human beings, and these were hierarchical. There were Americans, and that is Native Americans, and they were governed by habit. The Europeans, who he said were Gentile and acute, and governed by customs, the Asiatics, who were melancholic and greedy and haughty, and of course, the Africans, who were sly, lazy, negligent, and governed by caprice. So between Carl Linnaeus and Johann or Johann Blumenbach, they set the framework for what we know today as race. Now then, let's talk about America, how that further evolved in America, that concept. When America was trying to uh, build out the country by taking over the land from or stealing the land from the Native Americans and they were creating these large farms, of course, these large farms needed labor. And they didn't want to pay for the labor in, this, in the classical sense that people pay a, a decent wage for a decent day's work. So they came up with these schemes uh, to get cheap labor. One of the, the main schemes initially was the indentured servant. So people in Europe, particularly poor uh, people living in England, and especially the Irish, uh, would agreed to come over and work for a certain period of time, five to seven years, and that would be their period of indenture, with the understanding that after they completed their five or seven year uh, period to pay off their fare and to pay off their debt, they would be freed and they would be given land. That scheme worked to a certain point, but then it, the word got back to England that uh, some of these rich white landowners were not given up the land at the end of the period of indenture and 
And also, they were passing rules that if you violated certain rules and regulations on the, on the given farm, that your period of indenture could be extended. So in other words, they were hustling these people. They were working them. They were not honoring the terms of the agreement. And, and what that meant is, number one, less people were willing to get on the boat and come over to the United States of America and be indentured servants. Secondly, what that meant was the people that were already here and who were trapped were becoming increasingly frustrated. Now, who were the indentured servants? Well, like I said, four white people, and I want you to keep that in mind, from England, and Irish people. In England, the English people thought of the Irish people as subhuman. The English people oppressed the Irish, talked about them, referred to them as being inside out Africans. And, and they meant that in a demeaning way. Had no love, did not identify with them as being their quote unquote white brothers. So you've got white indentured servants, you've got African indentured servants, and to some extent you have Native Americans, but to a lesser degree, working in this indentured status. Becoming increasingly uh, unhappy, dissatisfied with the fact that the system seems to benefit a few white elite landholders and everyone else is getting the short end of the stick. Along comes a guy named Samuel Bacon, and Bacon is not poor. He's actually a very wealthy uh, landowner himself. He's white. He's actually a cousin to uh, the wife of the governor of Virginia. And he's unhappy with the fact that the governor of Virginia has created a or entered into a treaty with the local Native American tribe not to take any of their land in exchange for peace. Bacon didn't like that because he wanted to expand his land holding so that he could make more money, economics. So what Bacon did is he organized the indentured servants. That includes the whites, the people of African descent, the Native Americans. He said, these, these elite white people are oppressing us. We need to rise up and overthrow their system of government and, and, and take it by force. And they rose up and did exactly that, or they attempted to do that. They burned down Jamestown, that celebrated uh, first place where the pilgrims landed and all of the things that you've studied and heard about in American history. They burned it to the ground. So so much so, the, the, the progression of their, their uprising was so severe that the governor had to leave uh, the state uh, momentarily. And he, when he left, he met up with a contingency of British troops and they came back in and they put the rebellion down. But after they put the rebellion down, the white people, the elite landowners, the English elite were so shaken by that. Uh, they, they met with themselves and they said, look, we have to do something. These people will do it again. Uh, we are outnumbered. We got to find a way to divide them so that we may conquer them. So in 1676, for the very first time, the elite English who previously despised the Irish and other poor white people said to the people that were white indentured servants, hey, listen, you're better than the rest of those. You're better than the Africans. You're better than the Native Americans because you're white. And because you're white, we're going to give you more privileges. We will go ahead and make sure that once you finish your indentured, well, you will get some land, even though ultimately they gave them the least desirable land. But they did give them some land. But more significantly, they gave them the right to control and to manage and to supervise and to dominate people of African descent, to look down their noses, to despise those people as being beneath them, less human than them. And that was the point at which whiteness, as we understand it, was created, came into existence in American history. It was an economic scheme. It was a political maneuver to divide and to conquer. So no, the white colonizers didn't create blackness, as, as I said, because that, that's, that's something that goes back thousands and thousands of years. 
back then the people that we know today as Egyptians were black, self-identified as black, and they were proud and they were strong. But whiteness is a fairly new invention. It's brought into existence. Initially, it evolved through the theorists, but it came into sharp focus in the way that we understand it today when there was a need to divide and to conquer. Now, why is that important? Why should we care about that? Well, we should care about that because that same dynamic, that same maneuvering is what's happening in the United States of America today. We have the wealthy class, largely white people, billionaires, Hope Brothers. Donald Trump, if you believe him, he says he's a billionaire. Let's, let's give him the benefit of the doubt for this conversation. You have the wealthy class convincing poor white people, people of limited, people of humble, people of limited means who should have some sense of agreement and, and cooperation and togetherness with people of different races who are also simply trying to maintain their minimum economic status in terms of being able to, to provide for their family, to, to live comfortably in a home, to be able to enjoy vacations, the simple things of life. You have people who should be collaborating with people of color feeling superior to people of color, feeling hostile, feeling threatened by people of color. It's the same scheme. The, the notion, the false creation, the, the false science that supports uh, the, the idea of race as we understand it, the reason why it came into existence, that purpose is still being fulfilled in the year 2024. No, white people did not create blackness, but they certainly created whiteness, and whiteness is still being used for the original purpose that it was brought into existence. 